Hello, and welcome to the continuing series we call Lab Zero. We call it Lab Zero because it helps guide students with the prerequisites needed before tackling your very first hands-on lab in INE's Cybersecurity Virtual Lab environment. This short video covers the basics of VPNs, virtual private networks. Let's review what you'll learn to properly participate in the entire Lab Zero series, and then what you'll learn in this video. Since we're covering the basics of a given technology, in this case VPNs, there will be no live demos. So there's really nothing you need to do today other than have a short attention span. However, to complete the rest of the Lab Zero series and successfully connect to the INE Virtual Labs, you will need a few things. First and foremost, you'll need an INE account. Most of you have this already, but since this video is also on our YouTube channel, well, some may not. Honestly, any account will do, because even our free starter pass comes with the entire Penetration Testing Student Learning Path, or PTS for short. And, like all of our cybersecurity courses, PTS has a ton of labs. Because it's free, PTS also comes with both the monthly and annual INE paid subscriptions. Now, INE's premium annual paid subscription not only comes with lab access for PTS, but it also includes access to the lab environment for every cybersecurity learning path on the INE platform. The premium annual subscription also includes a few extra goodies, like free access to exclusive boot camps and discounts for eLearn security uh, exam vouchers. So be sure to check it out if you haven't done so already. Because most security tools are made for Linux, and many tools are only available on Linux, it is an absolute requirement for any security job to be familiar with Linux. Now, we prefer Kali and Parrot for beginners because they are purpose-built Linux distributions with most cybersecurity tools pre-installed and ready to go. Experienced users, well, go knock yourself out and use whatever you want. The choice is totally yours. Although you can use a desktop or a laptop with Linux as its main operating system, we do recommend using a virtual machine on your Windows or your Mac devices. Before attempting to connect to your very first cybersecurity lab within the INE platform, we will assume that you already know what virtual machines are and that you also have a basic working knowledge of Linux. You should also know what virtual private networks or VPNs are and how to use them. If you're not familiar with VMs, Linux, or VPNs, well, don't worry because that's exactly what this series is for. This video covers VPN basics, but look for other videos in this series for a gentle introduction to the other topics required to utilize our hands-on labs. We also produce the INE Cybersecurity User Guide as a documented reference for this Lab Zero series. Links to it can be found throughout our cybersecurity courses. Okay, so on to VPNs. And what will you learn today? Well, many of you may be brand new to cybersecurity or even IT in general as you jump into our very first course, Penetration Testing Student or PTS. And you're jumping into a virtual lab environment for the very first time. So our goal today is to give you a good general understanding of virtual private networks and how we use them to allow access to our labs. We'll start by defining VPN. Next, we'll show what this might look like in the real world. Then we'll introduce the tools of the trade and what you will need to successfully tunnel into someone else's network in a secure way. We'll close out by repeating that mantra that if you really want to succeed in becoming a successful security professional, well, then you must learn Linux. You're going to hear me say that several times. All right, so let's get to it. Now, I'm usually not in the habit of reading a slide word for word, but believe it or not, I kind of like this definition by Wikipedia. It's more like an explanation than a definition, but here's how they describe VPNs. Any technology that can encapsulate and transmit network data, typically internet protocol data, over another network. Such a system enables users to access network resources that may otherwise be inaccessible from the public internet. 
VPNs are frequently used in the information technology sector to provide access to resources for users that are not physically connected to an organization's network, such as telecommuting workers, <laughs> or as in our case, cybersecurity students from around the globe. Anyway, continuing, VPNs are so named because they may be used to provide virtual as opposed to physical access to a private network. In a corporate network environment, especially these days with the work-from-home economy, we want employees not physically located in the building, or even in the same city, state, or country, to be able to access internal company resources from their home offices. Well, that could be printers, servers, applications, or anything else provided by the company for productivity. Now, it's easy to do this when someone goes to the office and connects to the network right then and there. But if you're remote, well, it's a little more complicated, but it's not impossible. So, what do we have to overcome? Well, first of all, everyone has their own network set up at home, with each device getting a local, private IP address from their home routers. This means your machine can't directly interact with a remote network. Now, that's easy enough to handle, but once you get past that, you are now sending your traffic, which could be very private corporate information, over the public internet. Now, do I need to explain how bad that could be? So, what would be nice is if we had the modern equivalent of two cans and a string. With this simple contraption, we don't have to yell loud enough for everyone to hear, and I know that the string connects me directly to whom I want to communicate. But what we truly need is some dedicated tunnel that can use the public internet and gives me the same functionality. Well, that's exactly what a VPN is. So, what would this look like? Well, I found this simple yet handy way of visualizing how a VPN works from techsupportcenter.com. Here, we have different types of users on the left all with different devices and ways to connect to the internet. A VPN allows us to create a secure tunnel from wherever we are in the world to our destination network of choice. Well, in this case, our choice is our corporate network, which is located on the right in this diagram. Now, in our specific case dealing with Lab Zero, it would actually be our lab environment that we've created for each lesson in each cybersecurity course, as well as our certification exams. Now, looking at the diagram, all three of the examples on the left will have installed on their devices VPN client software that knows about your destination network and how to connect to its VPN server. And that VPN server in the diagram would be that blue square next to your company's router. More on how it knows all this information in a little bit, but with that information in hand on what server it wants to communicate with, and of course a unique username and password for your VPN account, the server will then grant access to certain resources on the other side. Now, harking back to our can and string example, this is your string's direct connection to the other can. Now, that string allows you to talk normally instead of having to yell across the park to your best friend for a more one-on-one -on -one conversation that nobody can hear. Now, that's the network part of virtual private network. Well, what about private? So, even if you talk normally inside your own can to the person on the other end of that string, well, someone standing right next to you could still hear your conversation. Now, you could always speak in a foreign language or in a code that only you and your best friend know. But here's the cool part. The technology built into VPNs can make that so much easier because it also encrypts all of the data automatically. So if your data gets intercepted along the way on the public internet, well, it doesn't matter because nobody can read it anyway. So we've now seen network and also private. But what about the virtual part of VPN? Well, the VPN client app on your device of choice creates a software-only or virtual network adapter. Now, once connected to the VPN, your virtual network adapter is now what communicates to the VPN server. 
The VPN server then assigns your virtual network adapter an IP address that matches the corporate network that's behind it. So you are now virtually connected to the corporate network. And voila, you're now part of a virtual private network. And you can now act as any other device on that network from anywhere on the planet. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? But you need that VPN client. You also need the information about the VPN server and a unique username and password to make this all happen. Well, how do we do that? As many of you are aware, most commercial software products have an open source counterpart. Now, without a debate on the entire definition of open source, for our simplistic purposes today, we can think of it as free software. Now, in this case, the free open source software that we'll be using for our VPN client is named, well, appropriately enough, OpenVPN. Then what we need is the information about the server we want to connect to. Well, just as Word can open documents that contain your content in a .doc or a .docx file, well, that .docx file actually contains a lot more information than just the content in your document. It also contains things like settings, preferences, and metadata. Well, OpenVPN is pretty much the same, but believe it or not, it's a lot less complex than a Word doc. Files that contain information about the VPN server and the preferences of your network admin have a file extension of .ovpn. And just as you can have multiple Word documents on your, uh, on your machine, well, you can also have multiple servers or even cybersecurity labs that you can connect to, each with their own OVPN file. So to be more specific, since each cybersecurity lab on the IE platform is created with a very specific lesson in mind, each lab that you have will also have its own VPN file, username, and password. Now, just in case you're curious, I do have a sample OVPN file for you to look at. Now you can see it really is just a simple text file with a bunch of stuff. Well, what is that stuff? Well, if you look at the top, you can see that it starts with some comments. So very much like code, it can have anything that you want and it's ignored by the application. It's really there for extra information for whomever needs it. Then it contains the information the VPN client needs to connect to the remote VPN server, like IP address and protocol and other parameters. So that way they know how to properly communicate between each other. There's also security information you can see a little below that, like what type of encryption to use. And then at the bottom, a digital certificate for authentication. Now, the best thing is, you don't have to know what any of this means. You don't even have to know that it exists inside this file. You just have to know that this file exists. Now, this file is created by your network admin, or in the case of our labs, it's automatically created for you when you start the lab. So you now have everything you need to connect to the labs using a VPN. So let's review. We now know by definition and in concept what a VPN is and how it works. So in order to connect successfully to an INE cybersecurity lab, you must have a server to connect to. Well, good thing we already took care of that for you, so you don't have to worry about that. But also, we took care of most of the rest of the requirements that you need. So when you log into my.ine.com and navigate to a lab, all you have to do is hit the Start Lab button that you see on your screen on the top right, and then the OVPN file, as well as a unique username and password for that specific lab, are automatically generated for you. As long as you still need the lab, well, you'll use the same file, username, and password. The only reason you'd need to download this information again is if you choose to try the lab assignment again in a pristine state, well, then just simply reset the lab, which is another button in the environment, start up the lab again, and now you'll get your new OVPN file and credentials that you can save and copy and paste. So the only thing left is making sure that you have the VPN client application. And you know that we recommend OpenVPN. Well, first of all, because it's an open source standard available on all platforms 
from Windows OS X, as well as iOS and Android. But it's also available, obviously, for Linux. And more often than not, it is included out of the box in most Linux distributions, so no downloading and installing required. And here is where I repeat that mantra of not only the Lab Zero series and the INE CyberSec learning paths, but this mantra also applies to the cybersecurity industry as a whole. You must learn Linux. Again, we've probably said this a number of times, but it's, it's so important that we're just going to keep saying it. And also, as we probably reminded you ad nauseum, you really should be using Kali or Parrot, especially if you're new and trying to tackle the PTS labs. Because not only is OpenVPN included in both of these hacking-focused distributions, so are most of the tools that you need for completing the INE courseware. So from here on out, Whenever you think of tackling any INE security uh, labs, whether that's PTS or any of our other courses, please start by using Kali or Parrot. If you're experienced, hey, knock yourself out. However, if you try to run anything else and you end up having an issue in the lab and you contact support at INE.com, we're going to start by recommending that you stop using those other operating systems and run Kali or Parrot in a virtual machine. Now, for many professionals, just by saying that, they understand it and they think, hey, no big deal. But for those who are new to IT or even hacking, you may think, wait a minute, what? Linux, Kali, Parrot, VM? What's a VM? Well, funny you should ask, because the very next video in this series is on virtual machines. Now, before I let you go, let me first of all thank you for joining us today, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson on VPN basics. And of course, one more time, since this is also available, this video that is, on our YouTube channel, you may not have an INE account to play along with all the Lab Zero videos in this series. So if you'd like to get your hacking career kickstarted, well, go get the INE Starter Pass, which is 100% free and gives you access to numerous course snippets, as well as a full learning path in each one of our training categories of cybersecurity, networking, cloud, and data science. Now, the free learning path that comes with our cybersecurity content, as we mentioned, is PTS. PTS comes with all the slides, videos, as well as unlimited lab times in the PTS virtual labs, as well as three complete black box scenarios, which mimic real world pen testing jobs. Now, in doing that, you will not only be fully prepared for the job, but you will also be preparing for eLearn Securities EJPT certification exam. Now, that exam voucher is not included in the starter pass, but it's a really good start for your education and dipping your toe into the water into an amazing career. So go ahead and head on over to INE.com and give it a try. You've got nothing to lose, and I kid you not, a life-changing career move to gain. Thank you for joining us, and happy hacking.